Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, I'm going to be looking at Debian 12 and we're going to measure some of the performance, but I really want to uh, stop for just a second and answer some questions I've seen. So some of the questions I've been seeing is, why does DJ always use GNOME? And another one said, he always uses GNOME. But why doesn't he test other DEs? You do not understand. Let me explain. GNOME is what I started with when I started initially looking at Linux distros. So I was uh, I used to do QA for Burroughs. Every once in a while, I'd go out to Camarillo and would, would help them do Q&A on new operating system releases for the B20, the B25, the B26. One of the things I learned from them was whenever you're doing performance testing, you want to keep things the same. So you want to keep things consistent. If I were to, to run, uh, let's say, KDE in one benchmark, GNOME in another, XFCE in another, MATE in another, I would have a mess. It would be a total apple to oranges uh, comparison. Now, granted, yes, I am testing GNOME, and there is different versions of GNOME that comes with each distro. But that is part of the test, is you're comparing maybe an older version of GNOME or a newer version of GNOME and comparing them together to see what changes have occurred. I'm looking at the Linux operating system itself, and yes, there are different versions of the OS that are being tested here. But again, that's part of the test. So that's the reason why I always use GNOME when I'm reviewing new Linux distros. It isn't because it's my favorite desktop environment. It's because a lot of the distros have chosen GNOME as their flagship, as the first one they get out. And then the rest of them may come a, a day or an hour or two later. It just depends. So consistency, when you're benchmarking, that's a best practice. So let's take a look at, um, let's, let's take a look at some of these.
So when we're looking at the harmonic means here, the first one is on the I.O. The Asai was the overall winner, followed by Debian Hardware, and then Red Hat, Ubuntu, then Debian VM. So the harmonic mean of the IOPS test results is Debian is first on hardware. And that's the 970 Evo that's doing it. So it's it's doing quite well. It's able to throw a lot of data around a lot faster than that 980 can do. Uh, and also the mean of the maybe uh, maybe bytes per second, those look uh, pretty even. And again, remember, this is Fedora XFS, not ButterFS on these tests. So the geometric mean of all the tests here, I, I would say Debian is the overall winner on this test for all of them. So on, on the test that I did, followed, followed by probably a Psy, yeah. And then Ubuntu, Red Hat. What about the CPU test? Should be pretty close. And there's quite a bit of difference between Fedora and Asai. That's that is significant. So that's relative performance. And then the geometric mean on the disk test Asai. Uh, definitely won that. Memory test to Psy again. Now remember, it's read that helps them, not write. And then we have a mean server CPU test. A Psy does really well here. I'm really surprised at this. This is not what I expected at all. But then that's why you measure. It's not about what you expect. It's what you actually see. Single threaded, yes. And tells the undisputed king a single threaded test. And even if it's run in a virtual machine, it still does well. So the number of first place finishes, uh, yeah, Asai had 20. And this is really weird because if you look at the last place finishes, they also had, uh, was it 13? Yeah, 13 last place finishes. So I would classify the performance of the Mac Mini as erratic. It's not balanced. So, and, and we haven't talked about that. So uh, let me get let me get down here so that you can kind of see both of these together. So clearly have a lot of this <laughs> going on. This is a good test because it's it's flushing out where what the strengths and weaknesses are of each one of the distros. Balancing in a CPU is uh, on your computer system. I'm going to do a video on this maybe later this week. You have a lot of components. You have the CPU, you have memory, you have a GPU, you have disk drives, and you have network cards. Even the power supply it plays some part in all of this, and also your display. What are you using for a display? How fast is that display? All of these things come into trying to get your system to balance. What do you mean by that? Well, what you're trying to do is that if a GPU is active and it's running, it's going to be relying on the CPU sometimes to, if there's uh, NPT or yeah, the, if, there's, uh, if there's changes that's going on uh, outside, the, outside the game, it's, this has nothing to do with rendering. These are things that the CPU has to do in order to feed data to the GPU so that it can continue rendering in a smooth environment. Your display, so if you're, for example, if you're trying to achieve a frame rate, of, let's say 144 frames per second, if that display is only able to support 120 then you're holding the GPU back because of the display you have. Because it's not going to be able to process and deliver 144 frames per second to your display. There are some, like I think Intel does this, where if you go look up a, a, a CPU, they'll make some suggestions as to uh, how much memory to pair with it. What GPU card matches this particular processor? 
And they may also tell you what storage device and what size of storage device uh, they recommend to kind of treat, keep things in balance. But the only one that can really tell if a system is imbalanced or not is your system under the workloads that you're putting it through. Try to look for those comparisons. I wish more people would look at things like that. I, I, I remember watching uh, the Computex and one, uh, I think it was, might have been Paul from Paul's Hardware, said, you know, a lot of people don't know what to upgrade on their systems. And so they usually pick the thing they want, but not the thing that's really causing them performance issues. So like, you know, they might pick, I need a new GPU. Well, if you upgrade a GPU, that could unbalance your CPU because maybe now the GPU demands are higher from the CPU and the CPU just isn't able to keep up with the demands the GPU is placing on it. And so you might end up dragging additional things in. With that, I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to stop here and thank my Patreons uh, and my members of the channel. Thank you so much for your support. It means a lot and it helps me do things that I wouldn't otherwise be able to do on this channel. Uh, also, uh, for those of you that watched the video this far, thank you again for, for your support and watching the video. I hope so. I'll see you all again and bye for now.